Okay, so here I have a regular dumb light switch. And today I'm going to show you how to install this smart Insteon light switch. So, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is cut power to the switch. And we do that at the breaker box. Alright, so now I've cut power to the switch at the breaker box. If you're not sure what breaker is powering a particular switch, you're going to have to just keep on turning breakers on and off until the light switch no longer turns the light on, and then you'll be good to go. So, first we need to remove the cover, and in this case, just do that. And now we got to get this switch out. So I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. Take the rest of the switch plate off. And then we can take the switch the rest of the way out. All right, here we go. Pull that out a little bit so you can see. Now, for Insteon switches, we need there to be a neutral wire in the box. So, regular switch, you have what's called the line, which is the wire that provides power, and then we have load, which is the wire that goes to the light switch. But for Insteon to be powered up, we're also going to need this neutral wire. So, what you're looking for in the box is a set of white wires that are uh, wire nutted together. Now, in my case, this wiring is a little bit odd. It's not white, it's gray. Let me get a closer look at that. See, so we have the black wire, and then we have this gray wire, and that's my neutral. So, what I'm going to do is disconnect the switch by unscrewing the terminals. Now, some switches, this wire might be wrapped around this screw, and sometimes they go into a hole and they lock in place, and the only way to get them out is to use wire cutters to cut them out. Um, you know, your mileage may vary. All switches are a little bit different. But those are the two wires that I need for the switch. And then this bare copper one is the ground wire. So that's the old switch. And now we're ready to put the new switch in. In your case, you might need a multimeter to be able to test which wire is live. So I'm going to show how to do that real quick. Um, first, I'm going to take this wire nut off of the neutral wire because we're going to need that anyway. Now, I'm going to temporarily turn pow power back on so that I can test this with the multimeter. Always be careful with bare wires exposed. Make sure that there's no kids around that are going to get their hands in there. Make sure that you stay safe. So, power is turned back on to these switches. I'm going to use my multimeter, which is set to AC. And I'm just going to test these leads so that I know which side is providing power. Make sure you can see that. So, if I touch here and to the neutral. I don't know if you can see that. There's no voltage 
on the multimeter. But if I touch this one and this one, I get 108 volts. So this is my line and this is my load. And then my neutral is the white, or in my case, gray wires. I'm going to turn the power back off for the actual wiring. All right, power is turned off. And I can verify that by touching this lead and this one, and there's no voltage. Power is off, it's safe to proceed. So, we have three wires here. We've got neutral, which we're going to connect over here. We've got line, which is where power comes from. That's going to connect here. And then we have load. It's going to connect there. And then the ground is going to be connected to the bare copper wire. So we want to make sure we have our wire nuts. And I'm going to use some electrical tape just to make sure everything stays in place. So here we go. First, I'll connect the neutral. And what I want to do here is just give this a little twist so that the wires stay together when I'm putting the wire nut on. That's pretty good. And then we start screwing the wire nut on. Give it a tug, make sure it's not going to come off. Make sure the wires are nice and snug. They're not going to pull, and that looks pretty good. So next we'll do the line. Again, line is where power comes from. Load is where it's going to. Always test that the wire nut's on nice and secure, because the last thing you want is for that thing to come off and cause a short inside the box. There we go. I can feel it wrenching on there. And that is nice and secure. That's not going anywhere. Next we do the load. Okay. Nice and secure. And then finally, you need to attach the ground wire. And that is just bare copper. You can spin it around there. You don't even need a wire nut. As long as you got a good, solid connection on your ground, you're okay. Now, what I like to do to give these a little bit extra protection is wrap a small amount of electrical tape around it just to make sure it holds in place. There we go. So now we have completely wired up the Insteon and we just want to push these wires back into the box. Make sure there's enough room for the switch to fit in there. Like that. Then we just take the screws and we start pushing it back in place. So I'm just going to tighten it down enough so that it's not coming out. And I'll turn power back on and give her a test. Now we have 
switch is powered. And the light is controlled. And this particular switch is also a dimmer. So if I just hold the top here, you can see it ramps up and ramps down and the light responds accordingly. So, that is how we wire the Insteon. Now I'm just going to tighten things up and close it all up. There we go. Now the next step is going to be linking this switch to your smart hub. So for that, we're going to need to open up the software so that we can uh, start the linking process. All right, so here I am at the console for my smart hub. Now for me, I'm using the ISY994i. Um, if you're using a Insteon Smart Hub, the process is going to be different, but should generally be pretty similar. So first I'm going to log in to my Smart Hub, and it's going to load everything up here. All right, so what we want to do is put the console into linking mode, and that can be done either with this button here or from the menu start linking. So we want to start linking, but we don't want, I don't want to remove the existing uh, links and I don't want to uh, do this one either. What I want is to add devices found and keep existing links. So now my console is ready for linking. Now I need to start the linking process on the smart switch that I just installed. Okay, so I've started the linking process on uh, my administrative console. Now I just need to get the smart switch into linking mode so that the console can find it. I do that by touching or pushing this very small button down here. And you just got to push, get a small screwdriver or something, and push it in until you hear the beep. You're, listen to this. There. That beep and that little blink means that the switch is now in linking mode. So now we go back to the console and we should see the device. Okay, so here we have the device was found by the linking process. Now for me it says already added because I had previously added this device. But if it was a new device, um, it wouldn't say that. So when we're done pushing all of the buttons, we just push finish. Now the console is going through the process of communicating with the switch and sending all of the information it needs to any other Insteon devices so that the whole network knows about the new device. Okay, so now the progress bars have ended and the linking process is complete. Now, in my case, because the switch was already added, it's already in a subfolder and I've named it and whatnot. Uh, game Room Dimmer. So here's our new device. And from the administrative console, 
we can turn it on, we can turn it off, we can set the dim level, etc. And more importantly, we can start writing programs for it. Um, but that's it. That's how you add an Insteon device to your home.